So construction for the Bell Elementary started in 1952. It was finally erected in 1955. When it was built, it was built for approximately 900 inmates. Uh, on the night of February 2nd, 1980, there was 1,157 inmates present. So as you could tell, we were desperately overcrowded. On top of the overcrowding, they were doing construction in one of the cell blocks. So they moved those inmates to a dormitory setting. The inmates that they moved were from a segregation housing unit. So the difference of the inmates was a very big thing. Uh, it should have been a big factor in them placing the inmates there. However, they didn't take that into account. So as you guys come down the hallway, if you look to your right, you'll see a picture of what this area would have looked like after the inmates did make it to this area. Um, inmates did gain access through to the entire penitentiary and systematically destroyed every single record that was kept on ground with the penitentiary in the next hole, with the exception of a door flip that was stored in the back office. So that that painting that you saw was 22 officers in one metal. Right? 14 of those were inside the penitentiary. The others were on exterior poles, field poles, things like that, towers. Right. So let's move on this corner real quick. Like I said, that area where we saw the picture was the actual record room. This would have been um, somewhat similar to that. Um, so you would have had any support staff in these offices. Uh, the reason it says modified for movie scenes, we have a lot of production companies that do come through and they like to film here. Um, and we kind of just left a few to show how they've changed it. Uh, as the facility manager for the penitentiary in New Mexico, it is my duty to say yes or no to anybody that comes through that wants to make any changes. Um, a lot of people know the longest yard was filmed here. They left a lot of the stuff up from the longest yard. Ten years ago it looked great, but now the weather is taken, you know, given it a beating, it's already kind of deteriorated. So now it's a nice sore for us, it's a safety uh, issue for us. So now anytime any uh, production companies do come through, I have to say yes or no to uh, anything they want to offer. If it's beneficial for the facility, we'll let them leave it. If not, we'll have them remove and restore the facility to the world. So your guys' left is a Protestant chapel. 
I'll explain a little bit more as we do move on. I'm talking too fast or anything, just stop me, interrupt me. If you guys have questions at all during the tour, feel free to interrupt me. Baldi, A, U, and it doesn't matter, just get my attention. Talk to the time they have the Not at all. Okay, the barbershop. This is the barbershop for the, what is me? a very sought after trade still in our active facilities. Uh, back in the day when I used to grow hair, I used to get my hair cut by an inmate barber. That was a long time ago. Um, but it's, it's still a sought after trade, like I said. Um, it's a very uh, good trade when you do hit the streets. It's a market that will probably never go away for most people. <laughs> okay, so the Catholic Chapel, as I said, is one of those places we won't take photos of. Um, Chow halls are a very dangerous place um, because you have a lot of different races, uh, gangs, just a lot of different things that go on in the chow hall. A lot of inmates in one place, not a good thing. Uh, back then, we didn't have some of the technology we do have today, such as your wands, metal detectors, things like that, so it was a lot harder to regulate what actually was going in and out of the chow hall. Uh, back then, Back then, uh, I would have been a corridor officer or sergeant out here, two officers inside the mess hall while the inmates were eating. If anything did happen, it was the corridor sergeant's job to secure that until backup arrived and helped de-escalate everything. Go ahead, sir. Is there a downstairs area? There is a basement area. Oh, so I'm gonna just... You have all your like electrical rooms, um, your access to laundry, to the kitchen, uh, so the elevator can leave up all your supplies to the kitchen, uh, and then you have your gas chamber, and things like that. Okay. Anything else? Can we say the gas chamber? Where you are going to say this. Um, uh, pages. Uh, who can answer me what they're used for, minus the three that I mentioned earlier? Right. Well, I guess the three plus on that in the sky to that. Anyways, yes, they're recreation pens. Who would go into those? Okay, New Mexico is designed one through six. One being your lowest custody offender, six being your highest custody offender. So this is typical of a level five, level six setting. Um, those gentlemen aren't allowed to uh, go to recreation. They're not allowed to congregate with the rest of the population, so they're put out there by themselves. They're allotted one hour a day. Um, and the whole process of taking them is they're escorted hands-on in restraints to and from that recreation. Right now we're in front of cell blocks one and two. Uh, one and two were honor units, and actually two is supposed to look like one, but because they filmed a few different things in two, we've let them modify two and two only. Uh, they've asked to modify one as well, but we want to try to keep one as historically accurate as we possibly can. Um, so that's the reason for the sliding doors versus the um, swinging doors. Like I mentioned, they're honor units, so these inmates were allowed a little bit more canteen, allowed to stay up a little bit later at night. Um, and the doors, the door handles are actually on the inside of the cell, so these inmates could go and come as they pleased up to a certain time. How uh, they can move freely within their unit. Mm. Is the door still open? Up, up until the first girl you guys could go. I'll give you guys, yeah, just up to the first girl. Mm. And you guys don't do the tours of the anymore, huh? No, it hasn't been done in a few years. Oh, I worked out. 
And so right now we're passing A and F dorms. We'll come back to F dorm as we move back uh, north. Uh, but just keep it, uh, take a quick look in and see what they're supposed to look like. Uh, we'll see another one down here as we move on. Are we going to go in? Uh, we'll go into one down here. So if you guys start looking at your window, the windows to your right, uh, you'll see that one of the facades at the longest yard left up. As you can see, it's kind of falling apart.
Prior to the riot, the administration had decided to take off these interior and exterior bars down. Um, so your square plated metal and then your actual bars were removed. Uh, the administration said it obscured the vision of the control center officer. Which, yeah, maybe. But if you're the control center officer, you're not worried about acquiring intel. All you see in front of you is a wall. If you actually look out the windows, you can't see much down the corridor anyway. The distance is too great to be able to properly identify anything anyway. Um, so they put a solid sheet of leg sand, uh, which they said was bulletproof, which it is up to a certain caliber. Um, however, excuse me, uh, why would you put something that's bulletproof in an area where there's not a lot of bullets flying? Um, just my opinion. Um, so we're going to watch a video now of the gentleman who was present in the control center the night as fast as they were able to get into the control center, I think it was good that there was no uh, firearms present inside the institution. Who knows how it would have been done. How many images have escaped? No. no. Oh, wow. That we're aware of. Like I said, they systematically destroyed all the records. It was so the the rebuild one. process was... The, the rebuild process took forever. What I've been told is not. What our records indicate, what the AG's report indicated, was not. Uh, if it actually happened, not that I've seen or heard, but who knows? A lot happened in those 36 hours that I definitely can't account for it, and I don't think anyone else here can. So it's kind of hard to say what actually did.
So like I mentioned, this is probably one of the only grills closed. Like I said, we, how we walked kind of free throughout the facility is how it was typically. Just because no one was ever telling anybody, hey, close the door behind you. Uh, when you do work these areas, you carry a big set of keys. Uh, and I'm sure it gets monotonous, constantly opening and closing the door. But it's that complacency that will get you through. Um, so we try to refrain from shortcuts, as they call them, on our active facilities. Uh, that one thing we try to harp on the door guys. Uh, even if it takes you 16 hours to do this, take your 16 hours. Yeah. You're going to get overtime. You can all get ready to get that safety for you and everybody else around you. So what time did the riot start? 25. What time were they in D dorm? The burn down dorm all the way there? 3.15. What time is it there in the infirmary truck? 2.15. Why come here first? You can get the drugs. Okay. So it's the 80s when all the children around already inside the penitentiary. Uh, you got heroin, LSD, PCP, who knows what else. Uh, now they break into here and they start consuming copious amounts of whatever they could find. Um, there is a med tech and three inmates present. Uh, they're able to hide and remain unfound the entire 36 hours. So the inmates come in here, start consuming drugs, that's all they want. Uh, a lot of people attribute the amount of violence that occurred due to the drugs. Uh, it's said that people laughed, slept, cried through the entire riot. Um, so they came in, took the drugs, and continued on with the rampage. Like I said, a lot of the violence is attributed to that. The mob mentality is kicking in. Uh, they're inebriated, mm -hmm. and now they're all hooked up on the little shop. Strong medical. Were there any cameras at all? No, not back then. Did they have a Uh, on this night, there's a suicide cell, one HTC, and you have cameras. Um, There's Cell Block 6 is uh, one of the single cell areas of the prison. Uh, where we're going to go now is into Cell Block 3. And what Cell Block 3 is, is it would have been the administrative segregation, death row, and disciplinary. So if you go on, we'll head down the stairs. So it's actually a sensory deprivation cell. 
and it was used up until the mid 60s, 70s. Um, and then being inhumane, the weekend it turned into storage products. So as we go down these first five for death row, the next step was your Check in at home. Block five. Uh, back side of the gas chamber kind of shows the history of the death penalty in New Mexico. <coughs> then I'll have you guys go to the front side of the gas chamber 
walk out of there, the two 48 hour cells, 48 hour cells are the, where you spent the last 48 hours of your life if you were on that penalty. Uh, then we'll kind of come back up and head up, okay? So like I mentioned, it kind of shows the history of the death penalty in Mexico. Uh, we used to have the electric chair here, however, we decided to bend it to the town of Springer. Um, so it went from hanging, electrocution, gas chamber, and then lethal injection. Who could tell me when the death penalty went out in Mexico? So, however, there's two individuals who fell under the old law. Um, so if they ever exhaust all their appeals, if they come to full term sentence, we'll actually take this bed to our level six, uh, G4, uh, bring in the contract company that they really have to do, and bring it back. Uh, any law enforcement, killing of any law enforcement officers, uh, kind of depended on the crime. Uh, it was heinous enough for the jury to so find it necessary. No. So if you killed three instead of uh, four, you were uh, coming out. It just kind of depends on the crime. So I could have been through rapists, murderers. Of course, we're going to go through somebody who's left my checks or the other guys. So what was the gas combination that they were doing? Was it administered in doses or was it just one lethal dose? It was one tap. As far as I know, they only did it once here um, and it worked the first time. So it was just dumping the gas in, letting it sit, and then they just pump it up. But I'm not sure the, the mix. I should actually research that. So was this considered a pretty horrible death or something? Oh, yeah. yes. Feels I'd say in all areas. It, it, uh, how much gush and gas have you took at NBC, CNCS, CS, OC, and nothing? I was the inspector of the Okay. Um, feels like an elephant sitting on your chest. Um, completely restricts your ability to breathe, starts messing with your mind. And, so, so is this progressively technically get more humane and like I think that was the idea of it. Um, so it's hanging pretty. So it's hanging then. A literature, a literature, a session for a little objection.